everyone and welcome to the channel today I'm gonna be going through my favorite cards in Diamond Dynasty right now near the launch of MLB 24 these are all gonna be good starter cards so whether you're starting season one now or maybe a little later on these are gonna be good beginner cards that aren't gonna be too hard to obtain that will give your team a good start you know maybe you could hop on into ranked events or whatever mode you want to play with enough of these cards so let's not waste any time and talk about these cards off the rip, this is definitely the meta cornerstone captain. It's Byron Buxton. And the main reason he is so viable is because he boosts power, fielding, and speed. And the cards that he boosts are low vision cards. And at the beginning of season one, with some core cards in play, there are a lot of low vision players. So Buxton is a very viable and safe captain pick to go for at the very beginning of the game. But... I will say Kodai Senga could be a solid captain as well, even Greg Maddox, depending on how you play the game. But Byron Buxton is a good, safe cornerstone captain to pick. And this kind of sets the foundation of your entire team. As you see with me, I'm using a lot of low vision players that get boosted because of Byron Buxton. It makes a lot of cards more viable and competitive with like 90 plus diamonds. So I would recommend starting off with a cornerstone captain and then maybe keeping an eye on some of the cards that I mentioned today based on that captain boost. So let's start off at catcher. My guy has definitely been Gary Sanchez. Great power versus both sides. He'll get even better with the Buxton boost. It also gets up to 80 fielding with that boost. A very good catcher to start off the game with a get in team affinity season one. But not everyone is going to run that boost. So another option could be Yasmani Grandal. Switch hitting solid fielding. The man is slow as a slug. But 66 and 74 contact could be enough at this time of the game, especially if you're not too high in ranked and are hanging around the veteran and all-star levels. But if you are just starting off looking for a very beginning catcher, I don't know, maybe you don't have much experience in the game or are just looking for easy to obtain options. Josh Gibson, within the storylines, is a good place to start. Run through those Negro League storylines. Give this card a go, and he could play a few positions. I don't think he'll have that much long-term play, but he definitely could be a good starter card, along with 85 Harry Ford, because he will also fit this Byron Buxton boost. He'll get 92 speed, gold fielding, and will have power in the 80s, which is pretty good for a very beginning card. First base, it gets a little bit interesting for me, because I have Spencer Jones. I have loved this card. High power. Gets good enough on the fielding, because he also gets the Buxton boost. And Aussie is pretty okay in the outfield. It's not the worst fielder ever. And first base is a very solid spot to play him, I think. But he just has the five tools. I like his swing. And you could get him for about 15k right now, which is not bad. But if you don't want to go that route and you want to earn some free-to-earn options, I highly recommend Joey Votto. He crushes righties, gets boosted by Buxton to get a little better versus lefties. But you may want to consider having a platoon option at first base, a left-handed hitter who is better versus righties, or does anyone who's better versus lefties, I mean. So, that's a consideration with this card, but I have loved Vado. I have loved his swing, he hits tanks, he gets more power, very good option. And if you're looking for a simple gold card with the bucks and boost, definitely try Paul Goldschmidt. I really like this swing, and with the bucks and boost, he becomes a very viable card at the start of the game. At second base, my guy has been, without a doubt, Tamar Johnson. With the Bucks and boost, he gets very good power versus both sides. And he has a small strike zone. Guys like Jose Ramirez, Jimmy Rollins, Francisco Lindor. Now, Tamar Johnson is another one of those short kings. And with that small strike zone, he is actually really nice. Like, it's a real big advantage. So, Tamar, I think, is going to be a very favorite option for people. But not everyone wants him. I've heard people really like Brian Dozier, who is in Team Affinity Season 1. Downside with Dozier, he's a bat waggle. I don't like the bat waggle. He also doesn't get boosted by the Vision Captain, so he will be these attributes. But, I mean, he's got pretty good attributes alone. So, I, he could be a good option if you're looking for some more help at second base. And then, if you're looking for a good, safe starter option, go for Tony Stone, whether it's this card we're getting the 90 overall version of her in the Barrier Breakers pack. People have loved her swing. She's got very viable contact and is good enough on the fielding and speed where she could be a very fun second baseman. I've heard a lot of positives about her. I would really recommend her. Shortstop is tough 
in my opinion. Because you got Colson Montgomery, who is very solid on the contact, power, fielding, speed. He doesn't get the boost, though. Doesn't get Buxton boost. But, you know, he could be a good card to have in the heart of the order with 97 clutch. And just, like, a really well-rounded card that isn't that hard to earn. But you got some more options here. I've heard a lot of love on 89 Correa. I really vibe with his swing this year. And you get this card in Team Finney Season 1. The only thing that's maybe weak is the 76 and 74 power. But with how good his swing is, I feel like you should still be able to hit home runs with him if you're connecting with swings more. Which I, I think you probably will with him. And then, of course, your good free-to-earn option. Ha Sung Kim is in the pack store right now. Just throw him at shortstop as a beginner option and then maybe build up your inventory elsewhere. Um, Obviously, there are more easy-to-earn shortstops like the, the Captain Derek Jeter, which could be pretty fun. Um, but I feel like this position is tougher to dip down to the golds. Because you got guys like Xander Bogarts here who has zero clutch, which is definitely problematic. Um, so I would recommend definitely going for like a diamond like Ha Sung Kim at the very least. Third base, I think my guy is probably Justin Turner. Again, no captain boost for him. But his good power versus both sides is very good versus lefties. Can play a few positions. And I just like his swing. He's got a solid Diamond Dynasty swing, I feel like. So I would recommend him for a safe third base option to get going. I would say another option if you are choosing him out of the 90 overall Hyper Series pack. Or just buying him for about 15k. I'm pretty sure that's his price. It's Adrian Beltre. I love his swing. He crushes the inside stuff. He's good versus right. He's good enough versus lefties and has good fielding. And I have been a big fan of this card so far. So I feel like he's a good option to try out first. And if you're looking for a good, easy, cheap, gold level player to get going, definitely go Rafi Devers. Very well-rounded on the hitting. The power is great and his swing is very nice. A lot of people love his swing. The fielding is definitely not great, but you're hiding him out at third. It's not the end of the world. He's going to be a very solid hitter for you over there. And then the outfield, we have a lot of options, a lot of different players to use. Um, obviously, one of those cards could be Byron Buxton for you. But if you're looking for other options, I highly recommend Stand. It's one of my favorite cards every single year. And this card actually is very good contact versus lefties. The power with the Buxton boost makes him really well-rounded. Gives him basically diamond defense without any parallels. I would highly recommend this card in your outfield. But there are, of course, other options. You know, you've got 87 James Wood, who's definitely weaker on the contact, but he will hit some tanks. He also gets the Buxton boost. You also can go the route of Dylan Cruz, who is a spring breakout program with also Buxton boost eligibility. And he just becomes a five-tool stud with the Buxton boost. But even on his own, I think it seems like a very viable card. And then past that, it probably gets tough because there are a lot of, like, eh, defensive outfielders or guys like Cedric Mullins who could be a good outfield option but lacks that power versus lefties not the biggest problem at this point in the year but he could be a solid option on his own but honestly I feel like the outfield isn't as stacked as it could be in terms of easy to obtain cards as weird as that sounds so you might have to find some some diamond some someone in the rough that's kind of how that phrase goes, right? Diamond in the rough? Yeah, that's how it goes. If you're looking for a solid outfielder, you're going to want to consider throwing some guys in the DH spot, like Charlie Blackman, because that fielding is not going to be great, at least until you parallel him a couple times. And then uh, Vlad Sr., who is definitely going to suck at the fielding, but he has a fun swing that a lot of people tend to like. And uh, even guys like David Justice, who are going to be an absolute slug in the outfield. But again, consider throwing those guys in the DH if you need some DHs. And if you're looking for a safe designated hitter, go for JD Martinez. You're not worried about the fielding at all. He's going to be a studded DH. And then he gets 100 clutch. So meaning he'll be a great pinch hitter option. And he'll get Buxton boost with only 50 vision. Really solid card to run. Honestly, there's a reason he's still on the bench now. This might be having a ton of diamonds. Because the dude is going to rake. But yeah, those are the easy to obtain hitters. And obviously hitters, there are always a lot of options. And I would really prioritize swings. In early game here, you got to have swings and animation and stuff that you personally enjoy. So try out all those options. See which ones you like, don't like. And if you happen to have hitters you like more, let me know in the comments. 
because I bet you other people will too, because that's just how this game goes. In terms of pitching, though, I feel like there isn't as much depth. There aren't as many, like, dominant, no doubt, use options. It really comes down to the type of pitcher you want to be. I'm a big control guy. So, you know, even though I have John Donaldson here, I suck pitching with him for some reason. I love my control guys. That's why I have the Nestor, which was available in a code the other day. Um, I don't think you can probably get him anymore. And then Brandon Webb is like my other control guy. If you're someone who likes that, maybe you're probably going for the Greg Maddox captain. But then I guess the one downside of going the control route is especially early game. If you're playing ranked below 400 rating or even below 700 rating, that all-star difficulty is tough to pitch well with control pitchers. Because velocity is the only thing you really have to mess with people's timing. So guys like Jacob Misarowski are very solid options despite having no control because he, he throws velocity. He doesn't have outlier, but he's got a really fast fastball, a slower cutter, an even slower slider, and a circle change, which is probably what you want to look for, especially here in the early game. That's why Satchel Page is very solid. He's got outlier four seam. He's got a sinker to mix in. He's got a curveball and screwball. Very solid pitch mix. And obviously John Donaldson is going to be a very good pitcher with the outlier he has in the slow fork ball. But velocity definitely is the favorite type thing. So from my experience of using cards, um, I would recommend that. But, you know, Jack Flaherty could be another team affinity starter. Zach Greinke as well could probably be okay. Even 85 Andy Pettit. But ideally, look for some sinkers and cutters. Maybe look for some high velocity as well. Because those things will really help you be able to pitch well in this game. Especially with starting pitching. The bullpen, we're going to be dipping into a good amount of golds. But I'd highly recommend doing Team Affinity Season 1. Because you will get Emmanuel Classe, Billy Wagner, and Jose Leclerc. We're all very solid relievers. You see Leclerc is 121 hits per 9. Meaning PCIs are going to get really small. He has a sinker and changeup and slider. It's a very well-rounded pitch mix. Billy Wagner doesn't have outlier on this card. But he has a high velo fastball. And then he's just a good lefty. You know, lefties are very valuable near the launch of the game here. And then Emmanuel Classe. Pretty good on the hits per nine. Outlier cutter, so that pitch is going to have gas. And it could be a very deceptive pitch for people who are just getting into the game. So I'd recommend these three just from doing Team Finney Season 1. Rysel Iglesias could be good too. A little weaker on the attributes though, so I don't really rank him as high. But in terms of other easier to obtain relievers, you could get 84 Marion Rivera through doing the Derek Jeter storylines. Jose Alvarado could be a very viable lefty with sinker cutter. Kind of weird he doesn't have a breaking ball this year. I've liked Evan Phillips. He's got a sweeping curve, so if you're trying to learn the new pinpoint motions, he could be a good card to practice it with. Devin Williams has screwball and cutter. He's always funky. Good pitcher to use for that. And then um, you could dip down to Camilo Doval. He's got an outlier cutter. Mix that in with a sinker and a somewhat deceptive motion. He could be very solid here in the early game because of that velocity. And then uh, going down to Silvers, you might want to try to go down to a lefty like Richard Blyer. I'll tell you what, the hits in Caves Prime are really bad. But the man is really good control. And if you're a control type pitcher, he could be a good pick for you. I really like him in BR because I've been playing a lot of BR near launch this year. And then uh, guys like Aroldis Chapman will have the velocity that you can use. He's got outlier one. He's got outlier four seam. That'll help you a lot near the launch of this game. So to summarize, if you have not done it yet, do your spring breakout program at the very beginning of the game here. A lot of very viable cards. And we're going to be getting an Easter egg program. New content coming that I will be reviewing. So make sure you keep up with the channel here because I will be updating you with all of the new content and my thoughts and good cards to try based on new content. I'm actually going to be recording a video right after as we talk about the new content we got today. So... Make sure you subscribe for that. And let me know in the comments which players you have enjoyed the most. That will be 24. And I will see you again on next one.